Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, here we are, another Tuesday and a gorgeous day. I think every day is a day to be thankful. So do you do daily affirmations? Affirmations like, I am grateful, I am thankful. Uh, today is a day of prosperity, gratefulness. You know, the words I am. And it would be a great thing for you to start if you haven't done it. And if you start doing this, you will realize it becomes a part of your daily ritual. Well, I think today's message is about daily rituals and what we do for our wellness, for our health, for our psyche, and our body. My name is Lisa Bubari. By trade, I'm your clinical expert, clinical hypnotherapist and stress management consultant. I have a healing center in Glendale, California by the name of Heal Within. And that's exactly what I did. I healed myself many years ago and for the past 21 years, I've been helping others heal within, become healthier, stronger, and better physically, mentally, and emotionally. You know, how I do it is hypnosis is such a powerful, powerful tool and technique. And if you start using it, and if you start learning of how to utilize this, you can make a lot of changes. So, I have a question for you. Do things happen to you for a reason? Or do things happen for you? Is it a true? Is it true? Or is it a myth? Well, the question really is, do things really happen for a reason? Some say yes, that everything has a reason, but I believe that everything has a cause and an effect. Of course, there is a reason for everything, but every time something happens, is it like this is what God wants or this is what it was supposed to be, or do you have a hand in it? Well, that's a great thing to talk about. Because when my clients come here, they say, I've always been like this, or I can't remember when it's been. I don't want to feel this way. You know, Oprah had a great thing. She said, we don't become what we want. We become what we believe. And I don't know if it is Oprah who said it, but Oprah made it famous. I believe it's a thing that has been around for a long time, maybe over a century. We become who we believe to be. So it's a lot in our attitude. A client of mine came in and she's been going through some anxieties and she said, how is it that I can't get out of this negative and anxious uh, feeling this depression, this loop of being in here, is it something like being addicted to this or the same, can you help me get out of this, the same as someone becomes a non-smoker? Great question, don't you think? Well, if we are addicted to negative thoughts, we also have to remember we can shift it and become more addicted, which I don't like the word addiction, addicted or implied addiction, which you can turn it and say, I like utilizing this word more often and become more positive instead of negative. So is it true that you are addicted to that negativity, to that anxiety? The same thing when someone says, I am addicted to sugar. And I ask them, how often do you have sugar? Because sugar 
it's like there's a lot of sugar in everything we do. Um, there's so much sugar in all the foods, the contents and everything. Even uh, fruits have sugar, but it's good sugar versus bad sugar. And there's people who are diabetic and they can't even have a little bit of that. And type 2 diabetes, that how they crave sugar or cigarettes or anything else in life. So is that part of our attitude? Is that part of our addiction? Is that part of our behavior? Is that part of a habit? And is it true that you are addicted? Is it true that you can't live without it? I know so many who say, I can't live without a cup of coffee. I have to have three to four cups of coffee a day. And they don't drink just any coffee. They have to have a certain types of coffee. But I beg to differ because that same person who told me I can't have, I can't live without four cups of coffee. You know what? We were at an event together and it was not at home. We were outside. We were at a retreat together for a few days and it was Costa Rica. And believe it or not, because of the retreat we were in and it was all about healing it was about wellness it was about the juicing and even for a few hours we had to do this like a silent retreat it became like a silent retreat she did not have a cup of coffee we did not have any desserts or anything and for over six hours there was absolutely no speaking and all we had to do was write our thoughts our feelings and what's going on within us like a journaling but for six hours absolutely no speaking now so many can say oh, I can do that all the time I'm alone by myself all the time I hardly speak to anyone and yet they have the TV going the radio going they are gaming they're doing something constantly being busy with something and there is no silence the silent retreat, uh, retreat that we went or the six hours that it was it was absolutely nothing except us and a journal. No speaking to one another, no TV, no phone, no distraction. Amazing. And she had absolutely no coffee for four days. So when she used to say, I am addicted, we got to prove that wrong. Because a part of addiction is that you crave it. Your body craves it. So every time you say something, and it doesn't matter if it is about addiction, if it is your um, mindset, and if it is about the way you feel or you want something or you don't want something, remember the subconscious mind does not compute the negative. So if you want something, I want you to always write down the things that you desire, the things that you want, the things that you choose, the things that you believe will make a difference in your life. I want to be free of the negativity. I want to have peace and freedom from the shackles of whatever it is that you believed that you are addicted to. You shift your mindset from the core and once your conscious and subconscious come to believe it, you see, once you come to believe it consciously and subconsciously, it's not only affirmations, then it becomes your reality. Everything we believe becomes our reality. And incorporate that and put that energy enthusiasm or make it a part of your daily routine that it comes to sink not only consciously but also subconsciously and then next thing you know unconsciously you are doing exactly what you want so 
Is it true? It's a beautiful question. It brings you to reality, brings you to present. You see, when we evoke something, it's bringing it up forth, bringing it to surface, putting light and shedding a light. And when we do that, we realize it's not happening now. This is not reality. It was part of, right? My past behaviors, my past thoughts, my past way of being. And today I can make a difference. Today I can turn around and say, is it true that I can't let that go? Is it true that without this I can't exist? Is it true that I am helpless? Is it true that everything has a reason? There is a cause. There is an effect. There is a cause. There is an effect. If you want anything to happen, it's not only the affirmations, it's not only the thoughts, but taking the action. So, what is it that you would like to change? What is it that you would like to amplify? What is it that you would like to double in your life? Sit with it and think about it. Is it true? Is it true? And ask it. Every time you come up with an excuse, ask yourself, is this true? Because a part of it is a fact and the other one is your reality. The one that you have created it for yourself because at one point or another they have given you a sense of comfort. Maybe that habit or behavior worked for you at that time. But is it true that you still need it? Or you can't do without it? So that's today's message. Anything you want, you can. I remember years ago, I believed that I could not stop smoking. I used to smoke a pack and a half a day. Actually, when I was in high school, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this. When I was in high school, my breakfast was a banana, a piece of chocolate. And at that time I was not drinking coffee, so it was a can of Coke <laughs> and cigarettes. Wow, talk about an adrenaline rush and everything that hypes it talk about my body being on this level sugar <laughs> banana sugar coke not drinking coke like coca-cola a can of coca-cola sugar chocolate sugar and then on top of that a cigarette by the time I used to get to class and having a cigarette which is talk about being wired, right? And at that time, as a young teenager, we don't think about um, relaxation and everything. We are constantly in the wire. And then when we drop the rush, the sugar rush goes, and then everything else, we have to replace it with something else. And that's how the loop comes that we become addicted. Even the cigarette, when I talk about my clients, when they come in for the cigarette or the chocolate or the eating disorder, that it's disconnected from the order, from the being in control, being in harmony, being in balance with who they are, we unravel things, we peel away things and then say, is this true? Is this true? Is this a reality? Can you not do without this? Can you not do without that? And once you start breaking things apart and asking the real, true, hard questions, you realize you created a pattern just for you. 
just for you. Was there a reason? Yes, there was. There's always a good reason why we have habits and behaviors. And there is always a good reason why it's time to let it go. And it's no longer benefiting you. Actually, it's harming you more than benefiting you. Through hypnosis and hypnotherapy, we tap in to those levels of layers and peeling away the layers just to acknowledge it because it's not happening at this moment and that's the beauty of it sometimes we don't even have to hash the past and start with the reality right here right now isn't it time for us to evoke what was embrace the reality right here right now and ask ourselves do I still want to keep it do I still want to hold on to it? What is it that you want to evolve to be? Time to believe in yourself and know that you can. Yes, you can make a difference. You are the master of your mind and of your body. You are the master of your thoughts. And you can shift those. It's about time you say yes to you. My name is Lisa Bubari, and at any time you want to feel healthier, better, more joyful, more in peace, and shift for the better physically, mentally, and emotionally, give me a call. I'm here for you. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. Today was short and sweet. <laughs> see you next week and until then god bless you and may the universal light surround you bye-bye thank you for being here if you want to check out some of the testimonials that i've got click right here but if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago two weeks ago even a year ago click right here see you next time